guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a first impression and full day demo on the new Ordinary Colors High Coverage Foundation. They did come out with two different foundation um, types. One is a serum more lightweight foundation and this one is the high coverage one. I already tried out the serum one on my own yesterday, the whole package came in yesterday, and it really did surprise me, um, but I did want to do the video on the high coverage version since this is the one that everyone's been talking about and hyping up. Now they don't have a whole lot of claims here on the box, I, since I'm filming on my phone I don't really have a way to look up the claims until I go back to edit. So I'll either have them scroll down the video or I'll have them in the down bar below. On the box, it just says a high coverage creamy foundation that softens undesirable, uh, undesirable hues and that you're supposed to shake before use. Now this retails for between six and $7 and you get one fluid ounce, which is standard for a foundation. I think for what you're paying, this is a great bargain. I think the only downside is that it is really hard to find your shade. They do have a wide shade range. I'll put the number of shades up here on the video, but um, I remember being overwhelmed with all of the options and not having any idea of where to start. So I actually bought about three shades of each foundation, the serum and the high coverage, and I found that my closest match is the 2.0 neutral foundation. So if you have a skin tone that's a little bit similar to mine, you have very yellow undertones, I would say stick with the neutral side. Um, they do have like cool and they also have warm toned um, foundations. So I would stick with the neutral. So if you'd like to see all of the claims on this foundation, see how it applies and wears throughout the day, you're in the right spot. Just keep watching. All right, so I've already washed and moisturized my face. I went ahead and did my eye makeup just to get it out of the way so that after this I can go ahead and scoot off to work. Okay, today I'm gonna prime with my usual primer just so that I can get a feel for how the foundation works. I'm just gonna go in with the Pore Professional and then top it off with the Photo Finish from Smashbox. Okay, so this is what the outer packaging looks like. It's nice and sleek. And this is what the bottle itself looks like. I really do like this packaging. It is, um, it's made of plastic, but it's got a nice lockable pump on top. There's no lid, but since the pump locks, you shouldn't have any problem with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit on my hand to see what it looks like. It's a little runny, so it has a little bit of movement to it. It doesn't have, um, it's not as runny as, of course, their serum foundation is, which almost fell completely off of my hand. But it's also not like a mousse either, so it's a nice kind of standard foundation um, formula in that sense of the word. So I'm just going to go ahead and pat this on and... And on this side of the face, I'm going to go in with my Sigma F80, and on the other side, I'm just going to use my Beauty Blender. So. There's no scent that I can tell, which is very nice. Wow, so right off the bat, I'm getting full coverage. Right in this area, it cleared up, or not cleared up, covered up the breakouts that I have. I have a lot of breakouts right here around my mouth and then one up here on my nose. It's very easy to blend out. It's bunching just a little bit in my nose area, but I tend to get that a lot whenever I'm using a brush to blend out foundation. Okay, so this is with one layer with the brush. I have to say I was a little hesitant about the color at first when it first applied. But after blending it out, it does look like a really nice match for me. It did blend out really easy. I got full coverage in the spots where like, I applied the product and then blended right on top of it, where I kind of had to shear it out. There wasn't as high coverage. Like right here in the middle of my forehead, it didn't really get that that well, so I'd probably apply just a little bit of a second layer right there. But overall, I like the feel. It feels very lightweight. It doesn't feel cakey like like dermacol kind of feels a little heavy this feels nice isn't exactly drying down yet so I'm probably gonna 
let that sit while I do the other side with the beauty blender and then I might set it with a powder. We'll see. So I am definitely getting a lot lighter coverage sheared out with the sponge. You can still see the breakout right here on my nose and a little around my chin area. But I have to say I'm very surprised. I love the finish with the sponge. It just looks, it definitely melted into the skin more and it just looks a lot more like actual skin. So it might be something where I apply it with the brush on my actual breakouts and any problem areas and then everywhere else I'll go in with the sponge. Every single time I come across a foundation that claims to be full coverage like this, I definitely like applying it better with a sponge, no matter what like brand or formula it is, so I am surprised that I am liking this better with a, a sponge. So this is what it looks like after one layer. Brush on this side, sponge on this side. And I have to say, I am really liking, like the color is a perfect match. Um, the color does change a little bit from application. It does, I don't, I wouldn't say it oxidizes, but it definitely changes a little. That color difference works in my favor and it does look a lot more like my skin tone, but that's something to be aware of if it does get, I want to say like half a shade darker. I mean, this might just be the neutral found, the neutral, um, a formula, I don't know, maybe the warm tone ones are a little bit different, the cool tone ones might be a little bit different, but they do have a lot of options, such as something to keep an eye on. I have to say I'm really liking the finish, so I don't really want to go in and set it with a powder. I might just go in with a setting spray and then do the rest of my makeup. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and I'll be right back. So the rest of my makeup is on. I only set the like center part of my face with the Laura Mercier translucent powder, but the rest of it I just set with a setting spray, and I have to say I really like the finish. I had no issue blending bronzer, contour, highlight on top of it. It all came out fine. I am noticing, however, just a little bit of an oxidation happening. It does already look just a little darker than it did when I applied it. Um, I could probably fix that just by setting it, like setting everything with the powder, but I kind of wanted to see how the foundation performed on its own. Um, so that's something to keep an eye out for. On the rest of my face, let me tell you what I'm wearing. On the eyes, I just have the Lorac Pro 1 palette, just a couple of the brown shades. I have taupe, sable, and espresso, and then a little bit of that black shade in the corners. For bronzer, I have on the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer, just a little bit here and along the forehead. For highlight, I have the Ofra highlighter in Rodeo Drive. I got this in a boxy charm. For contour, I have the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette. And for days like this where I'm going light, I mix the two lightest colors together just to carve out a little bit. And then set everything with the Urban Decay All Nighter. Oh, and brows. I used the um, the Brow Gal kit I got in my last boxy charm. And then the lips are Wet n Wild's Mega Last Liquid Katsu in Nudie Patootie. I love this color. It's the perfect nude. So since this whole video was shot completely in natural light, I'm sitting in front of a window right now. I'm going to do the next couple of check-ins under like artificial light, either at my job or when I get home at the end of the day. Hopefully I'll be able to do both. One, as soon as I get to work after walking, the next uh, when I'm home for the day. So the next check-in you'll see, I'll be in artificial light. This is what the foundation looked like right after I walked to work. It held up very well over everything, over all the breakouts that were there when I applied the foundation. The only complaint that I had at this point was that I had a new breakout coming out on my upper lip right there that you could see and it kind of came through the foundation. I have some other full coverage foundations where even if something pops up throughout the day it won't come out and you won't be able to see it but in this one if anything new does appear throughout the day you will see it. Otherwise everything else held up great. It wasn't breaking down anywhere. Everything stayed great on top of it. And you can just see the breakout in the little right hand side right there. And this is what it looked like at the end of the day. It did, the breakout did become more pronounced. I did get really oily on my forehead and it did break down around my nose. So 
I think I'm going to try this foundation with a different um, setting powder. I think that if you set everything, this foundation would be beautiful and you really cannot beat it for the price, which is like six or seven dollars. So overall, I think this foundation is worth it. I really did put it through the ringer this day and I didn't set the rest of my face with powder. So the only issues I had with it breaking down was where I did not set it for the day. So I would recommend definitely setting this foundation if you are going to be outside either in the heat or anywhere that you might be sweating. But if you don't think it's going to be hot or if you don't have oily skin, you don't really have to set the foundation because in my other dry areas, I really did like the finish of the foundation and the fact that it lasted all day. So thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye!